Hello everyone, in this video we'll see practical number 4 that is configure IP ACLs to mitigate attacks that is ACL is nothing but access control list we have to configure on the routers to mitigate the attacks mitigate means basically to make the count of the attacks comparatively lesser so this is the topology they have given here we have got server on the left hand side PC on the right hand side and three routers so in total there are four networks so let's configure this network first and then we'll begin with the practical okay so we need three routers here let's do it quickly so three routers are here okay let me change the display name and also the host name of it like this this is r1 display name and the same host name is r1 same goes for this router config mode display r2 r2 close this will be r3 okay now we also want to have a serial connection in between the routers so for that we have to go to the physical section switch off the router place this module switch it on do this for all the three routers physical switch off place the module switch it on okay and we want two switches on left hand side and also one more on the right hand side here we want to have a end device PC here on the right hand side and server here let's give a proper name what they have asked for like this will be PCC and this server will be PC hyphen A okay let's build the connection let's choose the automatic one here in between switches on the server and the router and on this side also and and specifically also we have want to have a serial connection between these routers yeah so i guess we are done with the connection now we have to set the net up network sorry so we have to set up the network that like is i can see there are four networks here okay so one is this between the router second this router between these two routers third and this area is four so let's set up the network here we'll give the network ad address here 192.168.1.0 i'll just note it down so that for the, your reference you all should remember 192.168.1.0 will be the address here and uh, similarly we can have here 192.168.3.0 here so one on this side three on this side and in between here we can have 10.1.1.0 and on this side we can have 10.2.2.0 okay as they have asked for so i've just defined the network addresses now we have to configure the devices with this IP addresses. So let's go to the router one, R1. Config the gigabit 00 Ethernet interface, sorry. The IP address is 192.168.1.1. Copy this and let's switch it on. Go to server. Go to desktop. IP configuration default gateway will be 1.1 and uh, this will become 2 subnet mask close you can see the green light here similarly let's do for this router 2 R3 go to config gigabit 00, 0. IP address will be 192.168.3.1 this time so just copy it switch it on go to PC desktop IP configuration 
okay i will make the changes here two and the default gateway will be 3.1 that this is the router ip address and then close this so even this network is ready now between this two routers r1 and r2 uh, when i place the mouse i will get to know the interfaces like this 010 on both the side so let's click on this router go to 010 okay ip address 10 point 1.1.1 subnet mask i'll just make the subnet mask common here 255.255.0 and switch it on close similarly to this router now config serial 010 10.1.1.1 is gone let's take two and the subnet mask will become 255.255.255.0 switch it on and you will be able to see the green light between this and the last network here on the router 2 the other interface is serial 011 and the IP address it will get 10.2.2.1 okay and the subnet mask switch it on close and R3 and I have to check the, uh, the serial interface number it is 011 only okay so go to r3 serial 011 okay so this will become 10.2.2.2 because one is gone and the subnet mass will become 255.255.0 and switch it on close okay if you'll go through the practical there is one more ip address we have to set that's this loopback address okay for the router r2 okay which will be consider while doing this practical so one more ip address we have to set here so before do like before we do that okay uh, we have to make the routing scheme enable here so we will go for rip routing scheme so let's go to the r1 okay go to config tab click on rip and tell the network the r1 is connected to the r1 is actually connected to 192.168.1.0 and 10.1.1.0 so let's 192.168.1.0 add and then 10.1.1.0 click on add then close this similarly now for r2 okay host name actually get change okay you just have to pay attention carefully and then make the changes accordingly again and again okay if it get if it keeps on changing so go to the rip here network address it is connected to so it is connected to 10 point 1.1 point 0 add 10.2.2 point 0 click on add and uh, one more network it is connected to loopback address okay we have to go to the cli and here we have to fire the command to set up the loopback address and i'll tell you what is the loopback address how to set the loopback address so we are on the ci now cli we are into config mode you just have to mention interface loopback one we are in the configuration interface mode now we just have to mention the IP address so we just have to mention IP and then address you can say 192.168.2.1 okay just remember on the left hand side we have got 1.0 on the right hand side we have got 3.0 so basically we are setting up one more network here in between which is R2 is connected to itself which is considered as a loopback and we are giving one of the interface the address as loopback address as like 192.168.2.1 okay so the command is something like this ip address enter it's an incomplete command we also have to give the if you actually enter question mark also you, it will guide you so it is asking me for the subnet mask so let's type the subnet mask also 255 255.255.255.0 it has been set exit okay so one more 
network we have configured on the router R2. Okay, if you click on R2, if you place the mouse, you will come to know. You can see. So both the gigabit Ethernet interface are down, but the serial interface are up with the IP address. You all can see 10.1.1.2 and 10.2.2.1. And one more loopback address have been added. You can see the fifth row of this table. Like this 192.168.2.1. Okay. So one more address we have added here. One more network we have added here. So let's go to the config. Go to static. Okay. Sorry, RIP. And we have already added 10.1.1.0 and 10.2.2.0. One more address we have to add here 192.168.2.0. In this case, click on add. So the router is connected to at least three network here. Of course, you can see two entries because they are combining both the IP address with the this. Network mask will not discuss in detail why is it so, because the 10 belongs to class A address. In that case, 255.0.0.0 becomes the network mask. So, thick. That's let it be. Let it be. So we have just added both the address here to the R2 and one more address we have added. That is 192.168.2.0. Now let's close this. Go to R3. Go to RIP. Okay, and it is connected to 192.168. 3.0 add and then one more like this 10.2.2.0 and then click on add close it okay so the routing has been done okay through RIP protocol if you try to ping from this PCA to PCC you will be able to see the reply we'll just try from both the end so let's go to PCA go to command prompt okay type command ping we are just testing the connectivity here first to the PCC. That this PCC lies on this particular network 3.0. 3.1 was given to the router, so 3.2 was PCC. So I am on the server A. That is PCA. I am trying to ping PCC 192.168.3.2. Enter, and we'll wait for the reply. Okay, so we are getting the reply. That means connection is successful. We can try it from other end also. That is from PCC to PCA. Let's see. Let's go to command prompt and ping the server. That is PCA 192.168.1.2. Enter, and we are getting the reply. Before we actually begin with the practical, that there is one more part we have to cover. Okay, we have to implement the SSH protocol on all the three routers. So whenever some Whenever from any particular device, if somebody wants to try to configure the router, okay, so SSH protocol has to get implemented. That means the command when it get fires remotely from any particular terminal towards the router, it should remain encrypted. We want to make the connection secure. So for that, what we have to do? Let's go to R1, and you have to. What I'll do for the R1, you have to do it for R2 and R3 also. Okay, so just have a look. So I'm on the R1 now. I'll change the host name first. Again, back to R1. I'll go to the CLI. Okay, I'll press Enter. I'm in configuration mode. You all can see. So the first thing I'll do here, that is, I'll set the IP domain name. CCNA Security. dot com. Okay, what we are doing with this practical here, we are making the prerequisites ready because this what they have asked in the practical. Like all these things should be done in advance first. Then we will actually begin with the actual be like begin actually with the main practical like this configuring the ACL. So we have to do this SSH setting on all the three routers. So what I am doing here for the R1, you people have to do it for R1, R2, and R3. So in this video, you will only see that like I am doing it for R1. But I'll also be doing the same step for R2 and R3. So after setting up the domain domain name, you have to enter username. Set username for router one. I'm setting admin one. For router two, I'll type admin two. So that I remember admin one. Then I'll set the privilege back to fifteen, giving all the privilege. Password with the secret command, secret, and then I'll type the password as Cisco one, keeping it simple. So for R one, I'm keeping username as admin one, 
and the password is Cisco one. Similarly, I'll do the same steps for R2 and R3, setting up the password and username as admin two, Cisco two, admin three, Cisco three, respectively. Let's click enter. After that, you have to configure the line, virtual lines, virtual terminal lines. Like this VTI, we need how many lines? We need five lines, zero to four. Now we are in configuration line mode. Login will be local will be allowed on the router and also the transport towards router by any protocol will be done through SSH that's transport input SSH command and let's exit from here we are done with the configuration line in configuration of line mode now we have we are back in configuration mode so now you have to generate the key that this crypto key generate RSA it will ask me how many bits 1024 bits enter and if you exit from configuration mode also and if you try to check even you can see here that SSH has been enabled even you can see the status of it like you have to fire the command show IP SSH and you will see that 1.99 version has been enabled so carefully pay attention that you people have to fire this commands on R2 and R3 with different username and password and now we are done with the configuration part we'll begin with the actual practical That's all guys from this video. If you really like this video, press like button and do subscribe to our channel. If any queries or suggestions, do comment below. For more such updates, follow us on Instagram and Facebook.